Hello, I'm Liza and I'm the Pudgy Professor. I am here today doing my very first vlog ever. Well, sorta, kinda, but anyway, I'm here doing my first vlog. And for my first vlog, I'm doing a gift to November. So this is hashtag a gift to November 23, hosted by Adam from Adam Sews and Allison from So Like Dottie. They, uh, they, they're wonderful hosts. If you haven't seen anything so far this year, please go back and look at the hashtags. It's, it's great. There's wonderful ideas. Um, it was done last year also. A lot of quick, easy ideas. The idea behind this is to get everyone to start thinking about Christmas prior to, so we're not you know, doing holiday gifts, whether it's Christmas or, or whichever holiday that you celebrate during the month of December. Don't wait until the day before. Let's, let's try to do something in November. Uh, I do try to be proactive, but this has really sort of kicked me to, to get started and think about things a little earlier. Um, so I will try to remember to put in down below, down below, all the links for everything I talk about, and also Adam and um, Allison's vlogs, uh, vlogs, and I will put those in so you can follow along with those, uh, those two wonderful people also. But I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I will put the list below where you can go to find the challenge. You can go to hashtag a gift to November 23 WIP for work in progress. And on the 30th of the month, November, everyone can upload their mix for the month. And there are tons of wonderful prizes, which I will also include. I'm not going to go through the list. Uh, this is towards the end of the month. So everyone's already talked about them. So I will put a list in. For you to see and i want to move on with these gifts which haven't been sewn work is crazy right now so so i've been watching all of the vlogs and there are some great ideas like i thought who am i going to sew for this year so my brother always comes home for the holidays he stays with my sister so they spend christmas morning together so i have started making pajamas for them. So for my sister, it will be in this flannel or brushed cotton, the penguins, nice and festive and warm. And as you can see, it's already cut out, but this is an old pattern I have and I've adjusted through, through the years. If you can see, this is an easy pattern. I have no idea where it even came from, to be honest. Uh, it's a stitch and save pattern by McCall's. Huh. Who knew, right? Um, but there are tons on the internet that are free. So there is a link, and I'll talk about those in a second. But this is the first thing. And once I get those finished, cut and finished, this should not take long at all. So there's that. My brother, uh, since they're together for Christmas, I thought we would do Christmas for him as well. So he gets Santa, also in sort of a teal. So they'll both be sort of holiday-ish, and I'm doing his pockets in this houndstooth. I thought that would be a good contrast, the two, if you can see them together. Whoop. It's a little, oh, wait a minute. You don't want it upside down, do you? Right there. So I thought that would be nice. Um, so my brother's pajamas are, this is a free pattern, the five out of four. I hope this isn't backwards for you, but I'll put it below. The five out of four pajama pants. And if in the link below, I'll put PJ bottoms and um, these, Hey Mitch, 
Hamish pajama bottoms is what they're called from five out of four patterns. Um, and then there's also free bottoms for the whole family from Life So Savory, and I put that below also. But if you look, you can find tons of pajama pot bottom patterns for just about anyone in your family. So both my brother and my sister have children with fur and paws. Okay. So uh, my brother has a Bichon who um, Bear is a cute little guy, white, furry, but when he gets groomed, he gets cold. So Closet Core has this cute pattern and it's for the dog coat. Bear is going to look so handsome in this. And so I've already cut his out of this pre-quilted I'm cheating pre-quilted and let me see if I can find the labels for them hold on I know they're here somewhere so for this I want to put a label on it for bear from Kylie in the machine last year. Nope, you can see. I keep you warm. So I thought that was really cute. I keep you warm. I can see that. So I have that. And actually, I have two, pa two tags. <clears throat> I have another one that says the same thing. And I have some black fabrics from some black quilted because uh, my grand puppy, who's more like a grand horse, uh, Maggie is a Great Dane. And I had an awful time last year trying to find a pattern for her. So I took one of the basic smaller dog patterns, measured mags, and just extended it. And so she is the gray black with black models. And so mod models not model she's not a model well she probably could be if she didn't think she was a lap dog but i'm going to put this tag on black for her um she's sort of a wild woman but i would like to put something on the black fabric to make it m look more feminine <clears throat> um i don't know what it would be um, I said, I'll make her a bow. To, and my daughter said, well, a bow would look like a bow tie. That's a boy. You know, do that for Bear, but not for Maggie. It's like, what do I do? She has no hair. I suppose we could put a bow on her ear, but I don't know. If you have an idea of what to put on Maggie's coat so she looks like a girl, um, put it in the comments. Because I'm a little stumped when it comes to that. I, I'm not really sure what to put on Maggie's coat. Um, the next thing with my sister, she has, she has a dog named Sadie, but Sadie uh, is part husky. And so she's out in the snow and the rain and she's doesn't, nothing bothers her. So a coat would probably make her hot. You have to fight to get this girl in the house. But she also has a cat named Chili. So my sister works from home most of the time. And Chili sleeps on her desk or her keyboard or wherever Chili can get so that she's really close to my sister. And I thought it would be cute to, in her office to put this fabric. This is a... Um, uh, upholstery like fabric and the with the foam and make her uh, a cat house yes a cat house so here is the pattern isn't it adorable little ears so um, just some place that that uh, chili can curl up beside her while she works and the instructions look so good. I mean, it just walks you right through. 
I have not done this before. But I do think that, I think it looks fairly easy. I, I know the foam that gives it its structure is going to make it a little bulky. But, you know, we'll see. And the Cat House, uh, it comes from, the pattern comes from C. Kate So. And there's, I also found a site that was five, and sorry for looking down and wearing the extra set of eyeballs, five best DIY fabric cat beds free. And I'll put that link below too. It's almost overwhelming when you go to look for things like pajama bottoms and um, cat beds and things like that. So, so that is my sister, my brother, and their kids. So there is one other person, uh, persons I wanted to do something for. And, um, my friend Joe and his brother, who is a retired, or a retired priest, Father Don, um, the two of them, uh, are an elderly gentleman who live together. And one has just had knee surgery. And so I thought it would be nice to make something that they could, that would make their lives a little easier or maybe a little safer. Let's put it that way. So couch caddy, very interesting, huh? It goes over the arm of a couch or a sofa and it tucks into the cushion that you sit on. So it stabilizes it, it holds it in place, but it does have gripper stuff here somewhere way over there. It has a uh, gripper fabric, like on the bottom of slippers, the, with the little rubber nubbies on it. it. It has that so that it doesn't slide. But if you look at this picture, it has a place for glasses, for a book, or, <coughs> excuse me, a, a tablet, <coughs> television control, phones, which would make it so much easier than trying to get up to get a phone or dropping something. Uh, I know my mom would drop the TV control or drop her glasses or something beside the chair. So this way you can put, you can put those uh, in the small pockets. So I, I thought that was a really good pattern. Um, this pattern is from So She Can, and I'll put this below. Uh, the fabric I chose to to use for this, I wanted them similar but different. So I, I chose a batik. And so this will be the base fabric for it. And one of them will have a pocket that is green. I don't know if you can see. So one will be green. probably cover my face with this and the other one will be blue and then there will be netting a net pocket ah. so batik's colorful blue with the black stretching net here and just for a pop of color, I have purple, purple bias that will go along the pocket, pocket edge and the edges. But I haven't decided if I'm going to use this around the whole thing or I have more of this multi batik. Maybe I sh can just make my own bias and put it around the edge and just put the purple in between. But I thought that would be a really good pattern for the boys um, to keep them in and safe during the winter and have all of their stuff close. Um, so with that, that one is so, so, S-E-W, so can she. Um, there's also, so, so, S-E-W-S-O, so, so easy. There's a list of 30 
free caddy armchair caddy sewing patterns so i'll put those below but for someone elderly i think i think it's a good idea um I, you know i i'm sure uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to be elderly but i do think that being in it makes um it makes things much easier maybe safer that way the last thing I told you that it was going to be quick the last thing I did was I've had this Christmas fabric for a while and I had a lot of fat quarters you know we all seem to move you over here a little bit we all seem to collect fat quarters it's pretty fabric uh, oh I'll use this I'll make binding I'll I will dream a nice dream what what whatever it might be but i had fabric and a lot of it is more juvenile and my granddaughter is now 12 and it's like do not make me any more quilts nana so i did this and if you look at this each block is one fat quarter i laid the fat quarters all together and i just cut and then i swapped the pile sewed them and then cut again so if this this was a stack i would cut and then flip the pile so a different color would be on top sew it together cut again and just kept doing that and eventually with all of the seams the blocks got smaller so i ended up with a pretty decent sized block let me find one that's pretty well defined It's, should have thought this out better, huh? There is a block. And this is the, the border. So, just by stacking those, I ended up with a fairly decent size. It's... 40, no, probably 50, 60 by 72, I would say. So a decent size. So the only thing that has to happen now is everything has to get finished by 30th. So we'll see. This probably will not, but the other things should. So thank you for being tolerant and thank you for watching. Go check out, there's uh, one more for today, uh, one more vlogger today, and I don't have the list, I'm sorry, for tomorrow, but each day is at least two. Get some good ideas. Keep following for more. Bye.